Broadcast Network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV, the destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! That was such a great song last night. So we want to welcome you guys to AfterBuzz TV for the Empire Recap Episode 11, the season finale part one. I am your host, Bam Erickson, and I would like to introduce my panel. Hello, everyone. I'm Emil Ennis Jr. And I am Sophia Stanley, and we have an extra special guest. She is back in the AfterBuzz studio, Empire Casting Director, Leah Daniels Butler. Say hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? How we have a lot to talk about. Let's I just, know. Let's, okay. I know. So... Lucius, or let's just back up. So, Cookie goes off with Malcolm. I'm going to let you go because you a lady and you guys were speaking about that last week, but... Give us, give me, give us your thoughts, right for the ladies. I mean, it was, it was so perfect. Mm -hmm. It was so warm. It was so endearing. I felt like the way he brought her up to his friend's mm -hmm. cabin showed how he felt about her. Mm -hmm. I think it was extremely intimate, and we had a little bit of a power shift mm -hmm. when she was extremely honest with him and said she was nervous mm -hmm. because she had never been with any anyone else other than her ex husband. Mm -hmm. And I felt like his response, that's so beautiful was so endearing was and I honest. feel exact yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was honest. Yeah, and I felt like he saw her. I feel like there is obviously an aspect of Cookie that is very hard and dominant and aggressive, but at her core I think she's a very nurturing and loving person and I felt like that moment, especially everything he said, as well as everything that happened afterwards, mm -hmm. showed how nurturing and loving she is, and that Malcolm, that is the cookie he sees, mm -hmm. is that per that aspect of her. And she looked great, like uh -huh. walking up that fur coat and those pants and those boots. And the, I, was, I even, <laughs> I'm not, like, I even noticed probably from a conversation we had about fingernails, but just how she walked and she had the nails that, I mean, she was like, oh my God, oh Lord. It she was... was she was great. Yes. And it was shot beautifully, mm -hmm. too. Yes. Yeah. It yes. was very, it was shot so tastefully. And uh, a little closer to the mic? Okay. Okay. And it was shot, shot so tastefully, and they just look so good together. That chocolate brown. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. together look good. The funniest moment for me is when she opened the shirt and she said, Oh, <laughs> you got muscle. You work out. <laughs> Was that was that, that was hilarious? Was that improv? <laughs> I'm sure it was. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember reading that. This okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Curtis, no, there's something that Leah just said in terms of the fact that she said it was so beautifully and tastefully shot. It actually almost felt very um wedding esque. Have you ever watched a wedding video? You know how there's almost, it's almost like wedding videos have a different filter to them yeah, on wedding yeah. pictures? Yeah. That's kind of, I think, what we were feeling, and I think that's why it felt so intimate, and even though, obviously, they did the thing, it didn't seem like we were spying on them. Right. It didn't right. seem like we yeah. were doing something wrong in watching them. Right, and the way they were um, angled when afterwards, and they were like sort of, they're the they're oh, yeah. sort of bliss, and he's this way and she's that way, and it was just cute. I like the like, shot. Okay, so now I have to be the negative person. <laughs> the negative okay, um <laughs> Do you think that Cookie should have actually went on the trip uh, with Malcolm knowing that Lucius was going to find out and flip his wig the way that he did? Or so what who cares? Lucius wouldn't have found out if she would have given the explicit instructions to Portia to say, make sure you don't say anything about the Berkshires, to say I'm somewhere else besides this, because otherwise Lucius wouldn't have had a clue where she was. Well, I think she did. Portia slipped up. Yeah, she did. She slipped up. But she knew she, yeah. she well, I don't know if, I don't know if Cookie told her, but I knew she knew she was not supposed to tell, because mm. right after, she instinctively knew, wait, I don't, what, Lucius, what do I know, <laughs> yeah. you know? But I also think it was, it was the tip off that Malcolm was also there because uh, because Becky informed that information, so Lucius put two and two together. Mm -hmm. yeah. That wait a minute, so if Becky says that Malcolm is there now, Portia's saying so that's how he was able to figure it out. Yeah. So, yeah. for me, 
I don't think she should have went away. I think she should have went and did a drive by, got it in where she where she wanted to go. But she should have not gone away for a whole weekend. For a whole weekend, because number one, you have this concert that you're playing, planning that you, Cookie Lion presents. It it was just that was not smart. That's a good point. Yeah. I didn't think about that. But no, and I think and I and I I agree with your logic. Mm-hmm. But something in my gut is saying no. Again, this has been a woman who went away for 17 years and she sacrificed her family and her and her literal liberty, right? Mm-hmm. And doesn't she deserve for just two days to literally feel like a woman? Not when you're dealing with the kind of man that you know you're dealing with and he already, like Lucius takes every opportunity that he can to kick her to the curb, although he always needs her, always wants her back. But isn't that the exact, then isn't for that exact reason why she should have at least two days of happiness? Because eventually the roller coaster is going to come and eventually he's going to basically be like, Cookie, I don't need you for whatever reason, whatever mm-hmm. his excuse is. So shouldn't she start putting herself first? And even if it's just two days, get two days of happiness happiness before she goes back into the storm. Agree. I just Lucius is an ass and <laughs> maybe she should have waited until after the IPO. Thank you. Got it Something. In. Fair enough. Mm, Fair I enough. I could go back and forth. I'm going to go. You know what? She knows how he is. I go back and forth. Okay, so what's your guys' take on when Lucius found out and then he dramatically fires her? <laughs> Lucius gets on my nerves sometimes. (laughs) I was kind of mad with him about that because it's like you have this whole life with, although you did screw that up, but, you know, we know how Lucius is. And so for him to just get mad, I thought that was petty. But it is who he is, so. For his character, it definitely made sense. Like, I, I wouldn't expect anything less. But it was very petty, and it was petty even more since... Carol was there with her and she's like oh look at what I've done like yeah. I, this is Aww. all mine now yeah. and you're showing her and then the way that security denied her though, she's like oh, we need to get that fixed yeah. <laughs> and she played her and yeah. she just yeah. played it over a card like yes. yeah fix this yeah. as long but, as you're giving me another one but I think what was more embarrassing <laughs> is he fired his ex-wife who has literally done everything for him but then you gonna keep Malcolm like that is like the ultimate because he's, and I guess, again, parental advisory, he's an asshole. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because not only does he want to show Cookie and everyone else that he's dominant, he also wants to show them that he's so dominant that I can now control your little boy. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. No, think yeah. about it. Uh-huh. Because she, if he fired him, he's gone, it's whatever. No, it's saying that I'm that powerful that you're still going to work for me, even though I basically got rid of your woman. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. And I think that's why Malcolm's reaction proved that Malcolm is a man and can go toe-to-toe with Lucius. Because he basically was like, yeah, he didn't fire me, but I already got another job. And not only am I going to take that other job, I want you to come, come with, with me you. and I'll take care of you. But then Cookie made a good point, too, when she was telling him, you know, he has to give you a reason to fire you. But with Cookie, he doesn't really have to give a reason because, remember, he dropped the knowledge that she wasn't really on the board because a convicted felon can be on the board. Mm -hmm. So does she really work for the company? Also, too, I'm going to go back and a little legal thing. He doesn't have to give a reason. It totally depends if he's on a contract or he's an at-will employee. You can do whatever you want. Mm, Yeah. Um, Okay, so... (laughs) I know I didn't mean to do so dismissive, but I was like, it really is literally his company. He can do what he wants. Okay, so <laughs> then eventually he goes back and uh, wants her to do the, uh, you know, produce the concert. Mm-hmm. And then he was getting ready to get into some more information. But are we surprised that he actually changed his mind, or that he somewhat hired her or needed her back? No, because. And anyone jump in. It's actually not that he needed her back. At the beginning of the scene, I thought it was actually rather endearing, the fact that he was in that quiet space. He was in this quiet room with this beautiful piano. I don't know much about music, but I'm assuming just because everything for this show, down to the art, the clothes, everything is so perfect and real to the fact that they're music moguls, right? Mm -hmm. Here he's at this beautiful piano in his beautiful office, and it's silent, and he can't work. What does his mind do? His mind flashes back to when it was just him and Cookie and Carol, and there was chaos, and there was noise, and there were children. And initially he goes to Becky, I need Cookie. She's the one who helps me when I'm in this place. Cookie's nowhere to be found, so who does he turn to? Jamal. Jamal. Let's go in. Yeah, okay. Mm. So that's really, in essence, who he needed. That's mm-hmm. the only reason Cookie back, got back on the bill. It yeah. was really because he needed Jamal. Right. Okay, now, um, before we get into Ryan, uh, to Jamal, I need to just throw a little shade now that we're talking about Jamal. Oh, my God, we're 
my sunglasses. I was gonna have sunglasses every time we threw shade. No, I'm joking, Ben. Keep going. I'm okay. joking. Keep going. Because I have some on my bag. I know. Okay. Keep going. So the one, the one scene that he had in part one, when Lucius needed him for something, he decides to go with. Jamal. And then Jamal's like, you know, my dad needs you. And then I said last week, when you allow someone in your relationship to yip yap so much and think that they can just say and do anything. So now he's defying the man who hired him. Like, nigga, uh-huh. come on, real. Like, you, you're not that you're not that papered up to where you're just going to disobey your your employer. I have a problem with that. And plus, I don't like him anyway, so it just gives me good reason to. So go ahead, Emil, because I know you have something to say. I actually have nothing to say. That wasn't a problem to me. And, and actually, I have something to say. You're right, Bam. Yeah. Oh, all right. I was gonna say like it. Did. Yeah, you're 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 spot on because I I yeah I can't even. You're right. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, hmm. I I mean I think he was just speaking his feelings. Like he thought what Lucius did was wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I think he thought what Lucius did was wrong, and so he's, you know, he wants to show Jamal that he's there for him and that he supports him, and so he's going to be, you know, supportive. I think he's the new boyfriend. And it's There's like, a right and a wrong way to love someone, keep <laughs> sweat. Listen. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, you, you finish your thought. I have a new thought. You, for, need uh, to, you, need to, you need to separate your personal from business. Like, That's you, true. You, this is your dollars and your money involved. Yep, yeah, but... I, that's true. Mm-hmm. However, I think that the reason Lucius hired him is because he's so good at what he does. And so he just felt like, you know what, I'm going to spend a little more time with you. I'll get to Hakeem when I get to him. But I'm good. I'm right here with you right now. Sophia? Okay. It's going back to one of the earlier episodes when um, uh, Delphine was on and when Estelle was on mm-hmm. and how she you know, was so in adoration of Lucius. She's like, you're my idol, right? But arguably, it was also Jamal who is her new idol. Right. For an up-and-coming artist, for her to basically be like, oh my God, you need to come in the booth with me. Like, I think you're absolutely amazing. Like, I love your work. She was on some levels definitely putting him on par with herself and arguably at the table putting him on par with Lucius. Ryan seems like, and this is maybe what you're, you don't like, why you don't like him. Ryan seems a little strategic, right? Ryan likes big, fast things. Maybe he actually is picking the boss. Think about it. And we kind of know where this is going to go, yeah. right? Mm. He actually is starting to view Jamal as the center of the Lion universe. Every time as he's watching him perform, and think about it, in that moment, this kid basically comes up to him and is like, my brother like thinks your music is awesome. Your song gave me the courage to come out. Like, that literally, that's like Disney right there. That's like what, what stories are made of. That's what makes us cry. That's what makes us connect to an artist forever. It doesn't matter on some levels how how grandiose Lucius's sound is. We live in a new era, and our new era is relatability and connectability. Ryan, as a videographer, is seeing that in Jamal. And therefore, he's also not just making a personal choice, but he possibly is making a professional choice because he knows that Jamal is actually the star, Jamal is the center of the universe, and purely even from a documentary perspective, he is the documentary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Aliyah, what do you what do you have to say about that? What do you think? I, I don't know. I don't think I. Th- <laughs> 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 I was be honest with you. She didn't I jump know. in the rabbit hole like I jumped in the rabbit hole. I jumped oh, right I, in the ab- yeah. rabbit hole and I keep going. For the fact, you know, for the fact. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I did not take it that deep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is only water in here. I really am just this loopy. Well, uh, well you know, I thought about putting some dust in the cup today, though. Uh, did you? I did. <laughs> well, speaking of putting something in a cup, I mean, Lucia Ooh. seemed a, a quite... Um, the bond with that he all of a sudden had with Jamal. What were your thoughts on now that Cookie's not there, now he goes to him? And they have this this interesting bond where... Although Lucius needs him, he's still insulting him yeah. while they're in Philly. I, yeah. <laughs> that was dirty. That was real dirty. Yo, you want me to throw you in the trash can again? Oh, I see. Yeah, that was that. I'm kind of at lost think... at words for that. But, you know, L- Lucius is who he is. And he, I, 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 what do you think? I think it would have been worse if he didn't do that because for him to all of a sudden flip the switch and act like everything's okay and they're cool, I need mm-hmm. you to help me, then it comes off as fake. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. then it shows me, 
okay, you just want something from me, but by you still sticking to who you are and still insulting me, still treating me like you normally treat me, and you still want something from me, I see you, but you, you're going to have to respect me before I help you. Right. So that's where that's why I kind of enjoyed the fact that he did that, because if he would have been like, oh, Jamal, oh, we're back in the hood, like that wouldn't have worked for me. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the way that, that Jamal walked into the to the backyard and we had the flashback, mm-hmm. right? And then the dad makes a comment, like, at least you walk like a man. And then when Lucius had to walk up the stairs, Lucius heard the, the flashback as well. Mm-hmm. And to me, what I thought it felt like is he was actually walking back into the past, but there was a different aspect of his physicality. Like, he seemed ashamed. Like, it wasn't as if he was doing, like, I yeah, agree. I did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you it, on that. It, it, it was shame. Like he, when he when he looked back at it, it was, yeah, that's not cool what I did. Uh, yeah. A, yeah, a little tiny, just a smidge, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. Not so much. Because mm-hmm. once he gets inside, he's right back to right. insulting. But, you're right. And what I thought was really interesting is... You know, again, Lucius is always Lucius because even when he couldn't quite get his his mojo with the writing, you know, Jamal called him out and was like, you know, you don't have it. What's going on? And then Lucius, rather than accepting the moment, he's in attack mode as a lion, as you always say, um, mm-hmm. um, Sophia. What do you guys think about what do you guys think about the song? The the um, when they were putting the song together, what do you guys? I liked it. I loved it. That's Me why too. I chose to start the show with <laughs> yeah. it. I love, I love the song. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's cool when somebody is called out and they can step up to the plate. He's like, oh, you're, you're sucking right now, pretty much. And then he pulls out the guitar and starts doing the Latin riffs. Like, I loved it. Yeah, I love. Uh, you know, um, uh, Terrence Howard. He actually taught himself how to play oh my the guitar, mm. and. He started, I think, um, when they did the movie, what was it, The uh, Best Man? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. Remember he did that? Yeah, movie? yeah he did. Yes. Uh-huh. And, um, that was not part of that in the movie. My friend cast that movie. That was not part of that. He actually came in the audition and made that part of his character. Wow. Like this smooth thing. So that was, to me, that was so cool. And I love his voice. Mm-hmm. Um, because he, even though he can he he can carry a note, he doesn't really sing. But the tone of his voice, do what you got to do. Like, I just was like, it was <laughs> yeah. just dope to me. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Agree, agree, agree. And I think also... There's something about the language of music Mm -hmm. that that is the one space where they both agree. Exactly. It doesn't matter what Lucius had said before. Lucius has always known that Jamal is talented. Mm -hmm. And I think to back up, and I don't know if we we have some of the quotes, but um, the the fact that he basically was like, I worshipped you. I worshipped the way you made music. If I could make music like him, there was no way this man couldn't love me. Mm -hmm. And to think that it's almost as if Jamal has always had this dual relationship with his dad, right? Because it's almost, it's Lucius Lyon, the superstar, yeah. right? But then at the same time, it's still my dad. And this star, this supernova, as Lucius calls himself, mm-hmm. has literally always orbited or existed in his space. And he's just literally wanted some of his light mm-hmm. and some of his energy. And I feel like in that room, that's what he got. Yeah. Instead of Lucius being the center, it's almost like they were orbiting around each other yeah. Yeah. and creating magic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was it was electric. Yeah. It literally it was, electric. was electric. It was awesome. Yeah, and, I, and I liked how how they were somewhat, somewhat insulting each other musically. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, if you're a musician... It's, it's like football talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that they were able to insult each other musically and then when they finally hit a chord that they both agreed and then boom, as you said, it mm-hmm. was literally like, you know, like orbit. I, I thought, um, I thought the scene was, oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to cut you no. off, but that, that scene, like I just, when I remember, I remember seeing it when it was first cut mm-hmm. and, and I, I, can we just take a second and bow down to Mario Van Peoples? <laughs> Because he yes. did his thing <laughs> in that episode. Yeah. When I saw it and those close up shots and it was just over I said, Oh, he's coming for you, Lee Daniels. <laughs> but he did such a fantastic job, um, just with the shots. I loved um Terrence, the way he took it back to Hustle and Flow, I don't know if y'all picked that up, mm-hmm. when he said, um, sometimes you got to take it back to the South and whoop that trick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got that, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I did catch that. Yeah. Uh-huh. I thought, oh, okay. Um, but it was just so, just the humorous things that they did in that, humorous, and but still um, working together, but 
uh, trash talking. Just the mm-hmm. whole scene was mm-hmm. just, like you said, magical. Mm-hmm. Now, what was also interesting about that is now when Lucius knew that he had him and the connection was there, then now Lucius does what he does best. Mm-hmm. He manipulates. Mm-hmm. You can have your publishing. Right. It's still my song. Yeah. And then he basically, he starts to plant in his head that you're tough, you're the man, you're this, you're that. And then we go to Beretti. Hmm. Um, what I find really interesting about Jamal is out of all the three sons, like although he's called all those kind of, you know, um, homophobic names, mm-hmm. when it comes to knuckling up, Oof. Jamal really is the best fighter out of three. Yeah. He'll, he will. I no, 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 and you know what? No, 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 no. maybe this. Nope. No, jump in, but I think this is what you're uh, saying. He's immensely the best fighter, right? What is um, it? In like martial arts, the whole premise is you should never have to fight because mm-hmm. your energy and your dominance should be such that your enemy knows that they cannot defeat you. So mm-hmm. that's what he does. There's yeah. something about his energy and his spirit, the way he man up. Even remember when the people came into the ghetto ass studio and, mm-hmm. and pulled. Mm-hmm. He literally looked the person dead. And was like, shoot, when Reggie came, same thing. Mm-hmm. So that's arguably why those people couldn't shoot, because there's no fear in a way like your brain says, okay, I'm, I might be able to hit him, mm-hmm. but if I don't kill him, he's going to get me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even if somehow I kill him, I don't know. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's part of what it is. And so kind of moving forward, I think that's even why the balcony scene was believable, mm-hmm. even though it's such an unbelievable thing. Because even I thought, like, yo, is he really going to drop him? Because yeah. I think he loves his family and empire that much that he drop him. What I also thought was interesting is how out of the whole entire crew, there was a girl that came quick, uh, that came quick and she the one who... No, she's a G. <laughs> what like, is it? she pops what, off yeah. too much, What's but she's name? a G. Okay. Chick, chicken. Oh, chicken. Mm. I, she's a G. You're right. She's totally G. Uh, okay, so Who then... Who in a juxtaposition with her name? Yeah. Right? Like, seriously. First one, though. Yeah. It's great. Chicken. <laughs> and so, when you guys saw that, I remember when we were at Empire Wednesdays, we were all on the edge of our seats. Like like Sophia said, was he going to... Uh, was he going to drop him? You know, Lucius was there. Um, and one of the things that I like about Lucius is Lucius walked over and pretended like, you know, Jamal, what are you doing? And then when he walked away, he kind of had like this smirk like, yeah, that's my boy. Yeah. Do what you got to do yeah. now with in your hands. Yeah. Like, he's a G. Yeah. He, he's yeah, a, t- he's he's a total. Yeah. Ooh. It's dirty. Like, the fact that he has to have Jamal go through all these loops just to get his approval and just to get what he wants. Like, I become hesitant with people like that because it always seems like it's never enough. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I've, I've completed this part for you. Oh, there's something else. There's something else. There's something else. And then you finally think you're in a good favor, and then there's something else. So I don't know. I'm, I'm glad that Jamal's man enough to do all this. But I'm going to disagree with you. What? Because Lucius is trying to teach his boys how to be street smart and be business smart. And when you are running a hip-hop empire, you have to be able to you know, knuckle up in True. all aspects. Mm-hmm. And Jamal is the only one that really goes through all those challenges. I've said before, Hakeem is, he's a mark, he's a spoiled little rich kid. Mm-hmm. And, you know, had had um, had Lucius punched Jamal, Jamal would have punched him back. That's true. I completely agree. Like so I feel like I feel mm. like no, he did. I, he did spit the blood on his feet. But I do agree with you. I do agree <laughs> with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel I feel like Jamal is the only one who's stepping up to the challenge. And although Lucius is being manip, uh, manipulative, he's doing it for a reason to figure out who can actually run this company. And so that's how I see it. But no, nah, y'all not feeling me. But it's no, right. no, no, I, I, no, I, I, I kind of see, yeah, yeah, yeah. see your mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. I do. I see yeah. your point because it's like he's testing him just to see if you're really tough enough to handle this when it comes down to it. Because for him, you know, I think when he made the decision, yeah, yeah, it kind of showed that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and it's funny because I know that that a lot of people are going to continue this conversation online. So if you are watching us, whether or not you're watching us live, um, in the chat room, or if you're um, watching later either on Twitter, on iTunes, or Facebook, make sure to use the hashtag, hashtag ABTV Empire, so you can tra- talk directly with us. Um, the only other thing that I thought was extremely important, because I've said this time and time again, is that I feel like this show is also Music 101. Mm-hmm. And I felt like there was a 
necessary symbolism in Jamal having to strong arm Beretti because I feel like so many artists previously and even you know Lucius made a reference to a Jay-Z line that I can't quote the line because I can't quote hip hop <laughs> but he basically was saying you know so many artists did not realize what they were giving up because they, they didn't know the business mechanics so right. there were millions or thousands of artists who wrote their own songs who produced their own songs but because there was a money person, a moneyed producer who actually understood the business, they ended up getting all the publishing royalties. Mm -hmm. They got the songwriting royalties. They got all those things. And the reason that they were able to do that was, one, because of money. And arguably, two, if you kind of go into the genesis of music, there were some strong arm tactics involved. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it was a symbolism of Lucius Lyon taking back by force what mm -hmm. was taken from, from him, him by force yeah. and mm -hmm. arguably the entire essence of music mm -hmm. and that's why hip hop is so new unlike jazz arguably it is the first form of music within a certain population of people which we have actually controlled mm -hmm. we have created and we have controlled mm -hmm. and that's why eventually going public for a music black owned company is symbolically so important let alone symbolically important for the family and symbolically important for the show just one other side note for me, it reminded me of the Death Row days. Be, you know, rumor has it that mm -hmm. Suge Knight threw, um, put Vanilla Ice yeah. on um, from his hotel and literally, you know, forced him to give all of his rights over. Thus, he wound up retiring and so forth. But, you know, it... There's a lot of hints of history with yeah. with Empire, whether if it's through music or if it's through stories. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really, like you said, it's, it's music one-on-one -on -one in all aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, what the hell with Hakeem and Anika? When I tell I'm you. I'm so. Com I, if they could have recorded our reaction. Hell yes. If they had a camera <laughs> no, on no, us when that scene came up at Empire Wednesday, Sophie and I literally stood up out of our seats like, oh my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had, I had a dress in heels. I literally stood up in my chair and was like, <gasps> like when you say not expecting, but then it, it, the fact it was when I saw that scene and then Anika's face, and I think it's partially because we've had Grace here in studio, so seeing her in that character is kind of hard to watch now that she's with Creed more. But seeing her face, it was not only when Hakeem like looked over and she's like pushed him back over towards her neck. I'm like, oh, bitch, what? Like, what? No, no, no. Pay attention to me. This is not about him. This is about us. Oh, my God. And I literally was like, I didn't know they had it in them. Like, I literally was like, A, I'm disgusted. But B, I'm kind of like, yo, y'all are wrong. But then Hakeem, like, Hakeem even said it. He hinted early. He was like, I'll steal your bitch. But, and again, you know what's so funny? We said, because we watch the show together, we obviously, the minute the commercial break happens, we talk to each other. And I literally was like, oh, my God, where did that come from? And you were like, oh, my God, it came from the lyrics of the song. Yeah. And I was like. But do you guys even remember back in the... The pilot episode. Remind us what when, when she put her hand on the shoulder. On well, the shoulder. When she said to him, I don't know if it was a pilot or, or a first episode, but she said, "Do you want to be the prince or do you want to be the king?" Mm. Thank you for that. <laughs> that was a little setup. No. Oh damn. <laughs> yeah. Because for me, I almost felt when, when they realized that they were being watched by Lucius, I in the back of my mind, I was still thinking, "This is an act." This is an act, and they're putting on for Lucius to make. I was hoping that because I, I'm lost at words. I don't even know what to he say about hurt. it. He was hurt. He was hurt, and so was she. And they wanted to get back at him. Sh and it, listen, it's the wrong way to do it, mm -hmm. but they were like, "No, we're gonna get him back." He did both of us dirty, and we're gonna get him back. Boo Boo Kitty is toast for season two. See, and I totally yeah, disagree. I, disagree. I totally disagree. I can't even call her Boo Boo Kid anymore. Yeah. Her name is Anika. Like, she a bad. Like, she is so, yeah. like, I literally, now I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm riding with you. Because yeah. now she's playing Sidewalk. She has a PhD in Sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So well, I'll, I'll leave it for online. I won't even do a Can full Can you explain fandom, to Sidewalk? Yeah, please. For, yeah, for, for okay, you. So, so the difference to me is I had originally not liked Anika because I felt like she... She represented going to school and having an education and being able to potentially build an empire with your 
intellectual sophistication. Mm -hmm. And I felt that somehow when Cookie came, Cookie so displaced her because Cookie is street, like the whole thing, you know, some, some, what's the saying? They made sidewalks because some, Oh, um, that's why they made sidewalks, because the streets aren't for everybody. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I felt that when Cookie came, Cookie is so street, arguably literally having left the penitentiary Mm -hmm. after serving 17 years, Anika started to play to Cookie's position, which she couldn't do. Mm-hmm. Wanting to go to that that diner and having the drive by, and after the drive by, yeah. she's like, "Oh, I can handle this. I can handle this." Nobody can handle drive by, boo boo. <laughs> like you need to go home. Like I, I don't know what kind of Juilliard graduate you obviously are, a debutante <laughs> type of person wants to be in a drive by. Like that don't make you cool. Oh my god. So I think that because and and it's very funny. I think this is why we all um, identify with certain people, whether or not we admire them or we see a part of ourselves. Mm-hmm. So for me, I think that because I would, even though I'm team. Cook, I would classify myself as sidewalk and someone who really revels in being able to see every angle and okay. reverse engineer things and mm-hmm. possibly get to a place before everyone else. So therefore, I don't have to put up my dukes. I actually put up my dukes with my mouth and my words. I feel like this is what Anika is doing now. Anika is actually playing the strategy of war how she can do it. And how she can do it is with her femininity Mm -hmm. and her womanhood, which belongs to her, which isn't arguably street because it belongs to her. Mm -hmm. And then as we see, eventually, and I'm going to stop me because I'm going to get episode 11 and 12 mixed up, Mm -hmm. but she then continues to use her business savvy and her Rolodex to really arguably take over yeah, the empire mm-hmm. as well as actually and then that's where, knight and then that's the why I'll stop you because then yes. we, cause we're going to do part two in, right. a, in a second Thank you. Uh, okay so now let's go to now the last son so we have Lucius and we have Andre and Andre does not feel like working because he feels like he has a higher calling I'm going to leave it at that I'm going to let you guys comment and I'm going to say mine for last Amir what do you think I mean I get it I, I, I get it, especially since I'm a preacher's kid. I get how if, <laughs> <laughs> if you are in that situation, and because of the way he was approached by, um, what's Jennifer Hudson's character's name? Michelle. Michelle. Mm-hmm. The way he's, <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, I really rolled my eyes really hard. Sorry. The way he was approached <laughs> by Michelle White and the fact that the fact that she prayed between his knees, I can see where a divine calling came from, and something may have um, risen up. <laughs> um, so that's all. That's all a way to be easily persuaded. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also feel this is just an easy way out right now. He doesn't know how to deal with Lucius. He doesn't really know how to navigate. I think off his meds yet. So I don't think he should be back to working. I think. Let me hear what you have to say. Now I'm gonna see if I agree with you. See, I, I, <laughs> that's I, a good point. I think it's totally normal. I think that I don't. I, I don't, maybe I'm a weirdo. I think everyone has a vice. It just depends whether or not your vice is legal or not legal. Okay. For some people, their vice is working out. For some people, it's television. For <laughs> some people, it's church. For some people, it's narcotics. I feel like we're all in this world seeking to be loved and seeking to be loved for organically who we are. Right? And so, going back the first half of the season, the reason that we never saw Andre is because we literally didn't see him because his family didn't see him. Right. And in them not seeing him, he never felt like he was loved and he never felt like he was loved by his father. Right? His father, Lucius, who actually thinks he is God, he never got his love from his father. So what did he do? He literally looked for love from another father, God. It seems like a normal void of a place where you feel accepted, a, f- a place where you can organically be yourself and let go your burdens and have no one judge you. Well, you do feel that way when you go to church. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've gone to the altar and it's like the preacher's talking directly to me. Mm-hmm. And so you do feel, I understand why he felt that way. Mm-hmm. That You make a very good point. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I see both your points. Mm-hmm. But... <laughs> felt like the <laughs> way hey, Lucius switched it off. Like, the I was feeling bad. Church. Right? Like, and literally, and even, what does he say? He goes, okay, and this is, and this shows, I think, also, too, that Andre is also shifting. That, mm-hmm. And we've talked about this a little bit, but not really. Andre is in a place now where I think it's better, it's, he's a better man, right? right? Because he goes, well, what about Hakeem? Because the way that his dad approached him, always angling him, angling him, angling him, mm-hmm. and this was the first time he was like, but what about my brother? Because now I think he he recognizes that it's part of his role to be my brother's keeper, right? Mm-hmm. So he goes, what about Hakeem? And then basically the dad says something, and he goes, I'll send a prayer down to you in a flame-proof jar. Ooh. And then Lucius goes, let's see who's more powerful, your God or your daddy? 
That Negro was cold. And, and we've talked about this. Like, I don't I don't even know. Like, I think he literally thinks he is the alpha, the omega. I don't yeah, think yeah. he just yeah. thinks he's mm-hmm. God. I think Hell he thinks yeah. he is God yeah. and the devil and everything. And to have the audacity, like, I don't know what his background is. Like, I don't know what his spiritual background is. But I'm one of those people that even though I was raised Christian, I very much respect other houses of worship, right? right. So, you know, when I grew up, I went to bar and bat mitzvahs. So I've been in temples. I've been in mosques. So when I'm in a mosque, I cover my head appropriately when I'm at a bar mitzvah, do you know what I mean, or a bat mitzvah. I respect that house as I would my own church, if that makes sense. The fact that Lucius had no respect right. for the fact that he was in a church of God and was literally like, no, I'm going to show you. I'm going to, okay, now I'm going to I'm going to defend Lucius for a second. So okay. just give me a second. Now, I totally get that. I've, I've seen many people when they're lost, um, they fall to religion mm-hmm. and because they feel, they feel, so it makes sense, mm-hmm. although I don't like the storyline, but it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But, Game recognized game. I said from the moment about the Jennifer Hudson's oh. character, I don't like her character. There's something about her. There is you. Uh, listen, mm-hmm. I don't care if you're an evangelist, if you are an elder. There are just some things that are ungodly, like and you just don't do. The fact that she got in between this boy's legs and then put her and then put her face to his to his like this and said. Let's pray. <laughs> really? There was there was something about her that I did not trust. I can't even say that. There was something about her that, that I do not trust. So I actually appreciate the fact that Lucius said game recognized game. And then what a coincidence Ooh. that when he approached her, that was the only time she was wearing her short dress with the sparklies. And any other any other time, yeah, I caught it. Any other time she had on a nice a nice, you know, Sunday go to meeting skirt, you know, past the knees and everything. And then the one time when Lucius is there, she's got on the short skirt and the boobs are up. I'm just saying. So I think well, it was. Were they pra- Look at me, I'm playing devil's advocate. Was it, weren't they practicing for the concert, whatever the concert? Yeah, did she know Lucius was going to be there? No, but no, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that she knew Lucius was coming. I'm just saying that. What is your intent? So if you have this big concert, now you got on your you your Sunday morning all week, but now the concert is is coming, and now you got on your high skirt and your boots and your heels. I'm just no. saying I have to defend Lucius. Game recognized game, and one thing he always does is he always protects his boys and his family. So I'm defending Lucius on that one. Wait, but are you saying that by her accepting his offer? Absolutely, because... And then she's singing with Juicy J on... on uh, okay, well, okay, well... Oh, yeah, yeah that, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll pause and we'll, we'll jump yeah. that up <laughs> part two. That's a little but different. Yes. Yeah. But yes. the initial offer, okay. if no. Lucius Lyon came up to me and said, I'm going to work on the gospel work and I want you to join along, I would do it. But you... but. Has your calling always been to be a gospel artist? Because no, before, you know, it seemed as if her ministry was just all about the church. Now you're trying to be platinum and be Yolanda Adams and Mary Mary. Uh-uh, I'm not buying it. But sometimes as a gospel artist, you see a way for you to, if, if, if Lucius Lyon sees her and she's up there singing. Ain't no, what, I didn't take her as a gospel artist. I took her as, there's a difference between sing, there's a difference between singing in church and then being a gospel artist. It's totally different. There are, there are plenty of nice no, people right. in the church who just love to sing. So they go to choir rehearsal on Thursdays, not Wednesdays. Why? Because Empire Zone. I just had to put that in there because y'all saw the meme. But, um, but, you know, there's just some people they just love to sing and that's the kind of character that I thought she was and on top of that wasn't she a doctor well she's a I think she's like a physical therapist, therapist. Yeah, but the thing therapist. is the thing is and what I'm saying is if we put in like real if, if Diddy came in my church right now and he saw a singer that was talented he came up to them and said I see this in you for somebody who has a, a certain career and they come up to you and say uh, I'm going to offer you this then even if you weren't thinking that you would be like oh shit wow, you think I have what it takes or let me or how about this why didn't she pray about it like she wanted to pray with Andre? Okay, okay. okay. I, the funny thing is, Bam, I, I from a from a instinctual level and from an emotional level, agree with you 100%. But she doesn't know he's the devil. Right. So at the end of the day, the you're, you're singing, <laughs> and this person comes up to you and says, I have never heard God speak to me. Exactly. Oh, yeah, he did play. I have never heard okay? God speak yeah. to me. Hearing you sing, God spoke to me, and I want to make a gospel song. No, jump in. Well, okay, here's the thing <laughs> about that. We all know who Saint Lucifer was, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't he? He was one of the choir directors he in the choir and in, exactly. in, in the ministry. Yeah. So for me, if you have Lucius's son telling you he is the devil, damn, that's a good point. You know, I can't, he is mm. this. This is this. Then 
this is who you made the connection with. Why aren't you listening to him? Well, drop okay, the mic. Anyway. Drop, oh, the yeah, mic. drop the mic. <laughs> and on that note, let's go into the last part. Lucius misdiagnosed. <laughs> Ooh. First of all, his reaction was everything. It really was. It was everything. Oh, man, like, I got my life back. He showed every bit of emotion that anybody that thought they were going to die and realized that they weren't, he captured it all. He's such a great actor. He is. That laugh, really after is. the doctor left, the laugh, yes. I was like, oh, my God, dude is dirty. <laughs> he is dirty. Like, evil. <laughs> evil. And we all, when we get to the monologue on his on the bed with Cookie Stamp, like... Right, can we go there now? Go. <laughs> when we were sitting there, here's the thing. So Empire Wednesdays, I sit next to Sophia. So Sophia, we're like back and forth touching each other, not inappropriately. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, like, I'm like holding on like it's a horror movie. Yeah, we're like, like literally, because we never know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> this scene comes on and Cookie walks in and he starts talking about this and then he professes, or confesses, I should say, that he killed Bunky and then he rises up and he rises up and Sophia whispered like the camera angles when they're going back and forth Watching that, it really felt mm-hmm. like I was watching the devil himself mm-hmm. reciting this. Like the way he was talking to Bucky, can't nobody kill me. Like, I was like, oh my God. Ooh. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. But he's great. Mm-hmm. It was an amazing Such scene. Mm-hmm. And then he just went back down to sleep. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Those meds had him loopy. It, it completely him loopy. And, and, and Cookie, Cookie was fearful because it's like she, okay, something like it was. She was she was being the wife, wondering, okay, is he okay? Mm-hmm. What's wrong? But then, even though he did what he did to her, she still right. went back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And instinctively, like you said, she has such a nurturing feel, you know, to her that she's like, no matter what these boys do, these are my boys, mm-hmm. and I love them. And she went back to take care of him. Yeah. And then <laughs> she's hearing this information, and so she was torn. She was scared. And what was so interesting also about this episode is how there were always references about how certain family members really wanted him to die. Mm-hmm. Carol mm-hmm. said, Carol, uh, Carol said, you've dealt with him this long. Why it, three more years is not going to kill you to, to deal with him because he'll be dead. Hakeem wants him dead. Uh, um, Cookie said that, you know, I can't wait for him to die. And so the fact that Cookie's right there, he's, halluc- he's hallucinating, and she had her moment. Did you really think that she was going to kill him, or do you think it was just a, a weak moment for her where she was contemplating? I think she was going to do it, yeah. and I think he, because he grabbed her hand. Yeah, in the beginning, that's yeah. what stopped him. Yeah, or stopped her. I don't think she. I don't think she would have killed him. I think. I think she would have. And the reason why mm-hmm. is in that moment. I think. I think it's because it'll be different if they didn't have all this history and when I say history I mean the fact that he left her in there for 17 years and then when she came out she dealt with all this shit and then Bunky dies he played the whole thing he did the usually at the at the funeral act like everything was okay wearing a white suit like he's innocent Mm -hmm. and then he whispers yeah I killed Bunky Lucius what you say? Like, just imagine, because remember how vital Bunky was in the dynamics of their whole relationship like he was literally at the foundation of Empire, always there. And the fact that he played Cookie, Lucius played Cookie so well, I would kill him too. So and, and I feel like two integral things happened when, when Cookie heard this. Not only did she hear he's not dying, her hearing he's not dying and that he killed a family member, then she really is like, oh my God, we actually can't survive. Exactly. Because before we possibly could, before mm-hmm. we could wait till he died, but I've already seen the damage he's done and arguably, what has this maybe been, six months, not even? She literally is thinking, we actually may not make it out of this. <clears throat> so for the sake of my family, if we are to survive, I have to kill him. It, it's almost like a mercy killing. Mm-hmm. Because he literally, he really is the devil. Yeah. He, what, what does he say? He literally says, because I have to read this line because it's such a great line. I'm going to rise from the dead like Jesus. I'm your Messiah. You hear that, you really realize he's a megalomaniac. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. pathological. And, and I think with that bunky statement, she saw him differently than she had ever seen him. She knew he was a killer. She knew what he was capable of. Mm-hmm. But to kill his family, because exactly. Bunky was family, then then we're all at jeopardy. Exactly. We're all in harm's way. And she was like, I have no other choice but to do this. I think she would have, too. Okay. 
let's get into you and the casting and just this whole phenomenal oh. season that you guys have had. Um, are you still overwhelmed with everything that has been going on? Congratulations, the uh, finale is estimated so far at 17.3 million. Oh, is it? I thought it was yeah. 16.5. Is it up to 17 I saw now? 17. I saw 17.3. Wow. And awesome. so for each week, the ratings have gone up. And from the premiere to the finale, that's almost like seven. That's like seven plus million. That's ridiculous. I mean, I think we're just everybody's just so can't even believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about it this morning briefly, my brother and I, and he was just, can you believe this? <laughs> he's so excited, and now he's going to the Bahamas. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Celebrate. Um, now, I've asked you this question uh, off camera, but I want to ask again because I know other people are wondering. Um, I've asked about when season two starts, are they going to do a full season as in 22 to 24 episodes, or are they going to start in January mm -hmm. and only do 12 episodes? And you said... <laughs> Was I supposed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> you said you didn't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I just, I had to ask again because people are wondering because, you know, yeah, we have to wait so long. Yeah, I don't know how many episodes they're going to do. I do know that it's not going to come on in the fall, though. It's going to be another midseason. Okay. So I do know that. Thank you, Fox. I, I, I'm great. very happy for that because mm -hmm. I didn't want 24 episodes because I feel like it's too much to, to come up with and things can get stale quicker. Mm -hmm. But if you punch us in the gut 12, 13 episodes, I think we're good. True. Although, it, it's going to kill us to wait, but we'll get over it. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll come back. I need it. Mm -hmm. It's like a soap opera. We used to watch Passions every yeah. day. Yeah, I loved Passions. Oh, my God. My, my, my other question is... Um, Everyone wants to be on the show from Z-list actors like myself and all us uh, up-and-coming actors. And then you have all these A-listers. You have Academy Award winner Whoopi Goldberg. You have Tyrese. How are you guys handling everyone coming at you wanting to be a part of Empire? Um, well, in the beginning, it wasn't like that because it was new and mm -hmm. nobody knew what it right. was going to be. So we weren't that lucky. We were you know trying to get people to do it and then when the first episode aired then we started getting the calls mm -hmm. and um i mean it's it's amazing it's overwhelming and i think musically in terms of the music artists i think it's smart now to figure out who wants to do the show ahead of time because they have to do that music mm -hmm. and get that recorded pre-recorded before they right. actually do the scenes and we were so behind the eight ball and the you know every every week we we're like okay we got to get this music done right. for the episode um i think that it's smart now to figure out who wants to do it get the music you know get them okay they're available this week or this week and then sort of figure out the storyline for whoever's going to be there musically mm -hmm. um okay no, I just was going to say, I mean, it's right there. Yeah. Number, uh, we were talking about during Empire Wednesday, yeah. officially oh, the believe. number one album. So crazy. <laughs> so you have the number one album, the number one um, ratings in terms of, of, of increasing from from episode to episode. Mm -hmm. um, one of the highest ratings, I think, that, uh, that TV has had since... I think Grey's Anatomy season five. Mm -hmm. It's it's the biggest rated finale. It's just wow. breaking records. And now the music, which we've talked about, the music is a character in the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. Yeah. So for the album to be recognized as number so one, and not crazy. just number one, but beating Madonna. Madonna. Yeah. Ouch. Meaning there was competition. Yeah. Exactly. Epic competition. Yeah. Is ridiculously amazing, but proceed. And then uh, another question uh, I wanted to ask is, or, or, or just appreciate, I like the fact that uh, your brother, Mr. Lee Daniels, you know, he knows, we, we all know he's a, a great director, mm -hmm. but he's allowed other actors of color to direct. Um, um, <sighs> Debbie Mar Allen. Mario Van Peebles mm -hmm. directed yeah. episode 11. Debbie Allen directed episode 12. John mm -hmm. Singleton directed an episode prior to that. And yeah, so I... Uh, what's... Um, uh, Ham Hamilton? Was this Hamilton? Oh, uh, Rob, Rob Hardy's another Rob one. Rob Hardy. And there, and there was a couple other, but yeah. I like the fact that he can obviously direct this himself, but the fact that he's sharing the the wealth yeah. I think that's well I think fantastic. for him and he's super super create TV's fast for mm -hmm. him yeah um, and I think that for him you know as much as he wants to direct he every episode I don't think that he and creatively he can work that fast yeah right. he's, yeah mm -hmm. it's hard for him so, so I think that's why he shares it too mm -hmm. not just too because he's a given person but also because he wants to he he can't he's too critical of every little thing and he'll work on one episode 
forever. Like, mm-hmm. okay, just keep fixing it, fixing right. it, fixing it. Mm-hmm. Since we're, we're talking to. about Lee, so every week we go to Empire Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. And we're sad it's over now because Empire's over for now. But every week we go to Empire Wednesdays. What was it like? Because I know we talked about the environment there with, like, fans and also the crew and everybody upstairs. But what was it like for you last night? You put on this event every week, and you had your brother there. You had Taraji there. You had Gabby there. How did that feel for you? That was it was great. Um, I didn't even know that Taraji was coming. I knew... You didn't? I, no, not that Taraji was mm-hmm. coming. Um, no, that was a surprise for me. Um, but I knew he was coming. He said he was inviting some people. Right. And so I wasn't... You know, when she came in, it was just like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> did you see her put her gold pants yeah, on? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. She was in true cookie fashion. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, it was great seeing everybody there, you know, and watching them enjoy the show. And really just, and Cookie, you know, or Taraji arguing back at the TV, which is priceless. It was. Do you want to mention the Empire, um, the... Oh, yes. Well, uh, we, Ooh. every week, because we go to Empire Wednesdays, we get amazing stuff that Leah always is so gracious to share with us. So we wanted to share with you, the fans, an Empire bag. I use it all the time, and I think I'm fabulous. And people stop me on the street, and they ask me where they can get it. And I'm like, oh, no, boo-boo. This is special. <laughs> so we want to share with one of you fans, and we're going to give it away. Um, we are still thinking about what the giveaway is, so make sure to tune in to YouTube, iTunes, Twitter, Facebook, AfterBuzzTV.com, after TV, after and next week, Thursday, we will post what the actual official rules are so that we can give out some stuff to you guys, because we're so thankful that you took this ride with us for this absolutely amazing show and have tuned in every week, week to watch us. Mm-hmm. Alright, so any final questions before we uh, before we have to wrap? No, just to right. thank you. Thank you, Leah. Thank, thank you guys for having me. Thank it's always so much you. fun being here. You no, you are, awesome. are you, you are always welcome. <laughs> Literally, it doesn't matter if it's another show and you want to sit in, we'll bump them out of the way. Yeah. Next season, you, though, yeah. we're going to have some fun. Ooh. So, okay, I heard that the writing starts back in April, so you don't know anything, right? I don't anything? know anything. I mean, I have some predictions, but I don't okay. know. Can you oh, tell us? Predictions. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Are any closer to that prediction with Denzel Washington? No, I don't know. I mean, okay. that would be amazing. It really would. That would be amazing. But I okay. really don't know if there's, you know, the truth to that. Okay. <laughs> well, let everyone know where you can be found on social media. Okay. Um, my Instagram is just Leah Space Butler because if you try to find it, it's crazy. It's at that Mrs. But that's Mrs. Butler to you. It's really crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but my Twitter is at L Daniels Butler. Okay. And um, do you want to you, like your any websites or anything or? Oh, www.leahdanielsbutler.com. All right. And I'm Sophia Stanley at Sophia Stanley. Uh, at E. Milton is Junior, um, Best in Social, Best in Dot Social, and then on YouTube, Chasing LA. And you can find me on all social media at Bam Erickson. So right now, this is uh, this is After Buzz TV Season 1 Empire uh, Finale Part 1. You guys stay tuned. We're going to be um, on a commercial break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to start Season 1 Part two of the finale of After Buzz TV with Empire. So we'll see you guys soon. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of After Buzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.